Hello and welcome to All About Russia. My name is Andrew and today we'll be learning about the Altai Republic. The Altai Republic, or in the Altai language, Altai Republika, is located in the south of Siberia, in the Siberian Federal District and in the West Siberian Economic Region. It shares borders with the Altai Krai and Kemerovo Oblast to the north, the Caucasian and Tuvan Republics to the east, and the nations of Kazakhstan, China and Mongolia to the south. The Republic stands at over 30,000 square miles in size, making it the 35th largest federal subject within the Russian Federation. However, as of the 2010 census, the population is only a little over 200,000, making it the 80th smallest in regard to population in the entire Federation. The Katun and Bia rivers both start in the Republic and flow through and merge in the Altai Krai, where they become the Ob River. There are a about 20,000 lakes in the Republic, with the largest being the Litskoya, or in the Altaian language, Altin Tol, which means Golden Lake. This has an area alone of about 90 square miles. The largest mountain in the Republic is also the largest mountain in all of Siberia, being Mount Beluka at over 4,500 metres. Forests make up nearly half of all the land in the Republic, with farmland making around 19%. Mountain and steppe terrain dominate the region at just over a third of all land. Interestingly, in the Alta Republic, nearly a fifth of all land is a natural reserve for various very wildlife or fauna. The remaining land is made up of a mixture of urban areas and localities. The Republic is entirely on the Krasnoyarsk time zone. Though interestingly, this has only fairly recently changed, as up until the 27th of March 2016, they were on the Omsk time zone instead. The flag of the Republic was adopted on the 2nd of July 1992. It is a white background with a one quarter sized blue rectangle at the bottom interceded with another white line above the then blue line, the latter two being 25th of the size of the whole piece. The blue is said to symbolise the purity of the nature of the Republic, its mountains and lakes, whilst the white is to represent the revival, love and consent of the Altaian people. The anthem of the Republic is actually playing right now and would of course be included in a link below for all those of you who are interested. The Republic is divided into 11 administrative districts, with the capital Gornoratesk being administered as a separate region. The capital of the Republic is, as before stated, Gornoaltesk, which is located in the north of the Republic on the Mema River. As of 2010, it is home to over 55,000 people. The settlement that was to become known as Gornoaltesk was actually founded originally by the Teluits at a village called Ulala, which we believe meant simply large village. When this was found, we're not 100% sure, but it is known that by 1824, pioneers from nearby Bisk had moved to the area and settled the area under their Tsar's protection. The Ulalu settlement had further growth with the Altain spiritual mission arriving. This saw not only clergymen, but also merchants and tradesmen move to the area as well. Cattle breeding, icon painting and blacksmithing had all developed in the village with this influx of new people, and by the turn of the century, Ulala was an important trading post within the Tomsk province. In February 1918, a Workers' and Soldiers' Council was established in Ulala, but that only lasted until July, when white forces under Captain Satunin swept in and took the town. This in turn was only to last for a short while, as by December the following year, guerrilla Bolshevik forces had forced out Captain Satunin and his men, claiming the town back from the Bolsheviks. When the Oyot Autonomous Region was established in 1922, Ulala was declared the capital, and by 1928 had been raised and developed to the point of being declared a city under the Soviet government. This in turn led to a rash of construction as more houses were needed for an influx of people. This culminated in 1932, where the city was actually renamed Oyrat Tor to better represent itself as the capital of the Oyrat Autonomous Region. When Russia was invaded in the Second World War, the city turned to production of war supplies, with things like uniforms, skis and boots all being produced in mass in the city and sent further west. Once the war was over, the city was renamed a second time to its current form of Gorno Altesk. 
The reason for this is quite interesting and due to one man, Leonid Pavlovich Potapov. He was an ethnographer from Barnaul who wrote a letter to Stalin himself. In this letter, he pointed out that the Altaian people were not actually Oirut, they were not a Mongoloid people, but in fact a Turkic people. And as such, not only should the city not be called Oirut Tor, nor should the entire region. Quite sensibly, after sending this letter, Leon and his family packed their belongings and simply waited for the knock on the door. Yet when that knock came, it wasn't the KGB who answered. In fact, what happened is Stalin had received the letter and agreed with him. Not only was the city to change its name to its current form, but the entire region was to be renamed as well. Leonid lived until the early 2000s and died a respected scholar alongside his family and friends. Since the fall of communism, the city has continued to grow. It is now seen as a gateway to the lush terrain that will occupy the Altai Republic and is seen as a major tourist hub both for Russians and other people from outside the Federation. Such an effort has been made to keep tourists coming to Gorno Altaisk that it actually won the cleanest city in Russia award in 2011. Today the city is topped with not only an airport, but museums, hotels and of course churches. The historical roots of the Republic go back somewhere between 75 and 33,000 years ago. Tools found in the Ongulai district are dated back several thousand years and believed to have come from an early nomadic horse-based people. Furthermore, remains have been found in the Republic dating from around the 5th century BC. Now, they're not 100% sure whether these are Kurgan mounds, Sarmatian mounds, or even Scythian mounds, as there are a lot of similarities. In fact, some have even suggested that they could all come from one much larger proto-nomadic people. The recorded history of the district falls very much like in the Altai Cry episode. Historically, the region fell under the crow of the Zhongnu and then Zhang Bei empires, but was superseded by the Roaring Khaganate in 330 AD. When the Roman Khaganate fell in 555 AD, it is argued that the Altai people first arrived as part of the Central Asian Turkic invasions, that they may well have married or bred into existing communities in the mountains and valleys. The history of the region pretty much follows what happened in the Altai Cry episode. Mongols, Jungar, Russian expansion, yada 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 yada. Just watch the video. Where the Republic's history begins to diverge slightly is on the 1st of June 1922. This is the date that the region was declared the Oirut Autonomous Region within the Siberian Krai. This was due to two reasons. The Altaian people had historically suffered from Russification under the Tsarist policies. Now, arguably, the Bolsheviks were not a big fan of Russification and therefore they gave the Altaians some autonomy to speak their own language and act in their own custom ways, as long as they were communists. Secondly, there was some propaganda to be made of this. If the USSR could portray a Mongolian people as happy, secure and united within its borders, it may entice other Mongolian people who were spread out across East Asia to join the Union. Even though the Altaian people are not actually Mongolian. As the administration changed, the Oirut Autonomous Region continued to be an autonomous region, first within the West Siberian district and later the Altai Krai. As the capital changed, thanks to Mr. Potapov, the region became known as the gorno altaisk Autonomous Region. The population, though still having a majority of Russians, did have a substantial Altaian community at around 33%, when in 1990 it declared itself to be an autonomous republic within the Soviet Union. The reason for this is quite complex, so I will try and break it down as simply as I can. Essentially, in the 1977 Soviet Constitution, there was a clause which stated that should a republic wish to, they could secede from the Union. However, in reality, this was never going to be allowed to happen. It also allowed for greater autonomy in the new administrative unit, the Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic, which is slightly below the status of a Soviet Republic, but as the name suggests, did allow for more autonomy than an oblast. The autonomy here is important, as there had been conflict between the Republic and the Union Centre of the USSR over economic freedom and ultimately legislative adherence in the face of mounting shortages and pressures. I would explain this in greater depth in another episode, but essentially, with stunning brutality falling out of fashion by the party leadership, but not 1940s focus 
on armaments rather than goods for the public, there was a peculiar situation in the USSR in the late 1980s, where goods were wanted and the threat of force was diminishing. This in turn bolstered opposition to the state in small things at first, but as we will see, eventually steamroll into the dissolution of the USSR. As the Altaian people did not have a republic and the winds of change and reform were in the air at this time, the Council of Deputies passed a resolution to become an autonomous Soviet Soviet Republic, which would allow them more control over their own affairs. This was further upgraded on the 3rd of July 1991, when in a bid to preserve the crumbling communist state, the gorno Soviet Socialist Republic was declared, giving it greater freedom and powers within the USSR. With the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, the Republic declared itself the Republic of gorno -Altaisk. But they weren't actually a huge fan of that, and they quickly changed it over on May the 7th, 1992, to the Alte Republic. Nearly four years later, a constitution was finally drafted for the Republic, and today it stands as one of the most popular destinations for travel within Russia. The bulk of the economy is based on agriculture, with things such as buckwheat and animal feed being produced en masse both for domestic use as well as export. As before mentioned, tourism is becoming huge business, with such lush and dramatic land in the Altai Republic drawing in millions of people. The Altai Mountains themselves draw in thousands of visitors each year for hikes and climbing as well as new age and shameless revival religious holidays. In fact, in 2016, nearly 2 million people travelled to experience this spectacular landscape. Unemployment, however, is very high within the Republic, at 14.6%, which is the third highest in the entire Federation. Not helping this is the fact that there are no trains in the Republic, and there's only one airport. In fact, a report from Bankfax found the Republic the single most indebted subject of the Federation at 99% of the population having outstanding loans. However, there is real hope that the boom in tourism, as well as existing work within the dairy industry, can help lift the entire Republic out of poverty. On the upside, the remoteness of the Republic also means that drug use is heavily restricted, meaning there is a much lower rate of drug abuse than the rest of the Federation. Alcohol is far easier to come by and much nearer the national average. Although fertility is much higher in the Republic than in the rest of the Russian Federation, standing at 2.48 children per woman. As of the 2010 census, the population stands at a little over 200,000 people. Of this, Russians make up the majority of the population, with just over half declaring themselves to be so, with Altaians coming in second place at over a third of the population, with Kazakhs being the third largest ethnic group declared on the 2010 census. There are scatterings of Germans, Ukrainians, Azerbaijanians and Tatars, but they all make up very small amounts of population within the Republic. Christianity is perhaps unsurprisingly the most popular religion in the Republic, with over a third of people declaring themselves to be Christian, and over a quarter of those being Russian Orthodox. Spiritualism, without any declared religion, is popular in the Republic, with over a quarter of people declaring themselves to be so. Shamanistic, Altaian, as well as pagan groups make up 15% of the census as well. Atheists and Muslims are both represented in the population at 14 and 7% respectively, with small scatterings of Eastern religions such as Jainists, Hindus and Buddhists making up tiny amounts of the population as well. Historically, the Republic was actually in the Red Belt, that being the regions that voted heavily for the Communist Party after the fall of the Soviet Union. However, in the 2016 election, Vladimir Putin's United Russia Party won with nearly half of the entire vote, with the Communist Party only managed to pull in about 20%. The head of the Republic since 2005 has been Alexander Bernikov, who was born in gorno in 1953. He was appointed by Vladimir Putin and is of course a member of the United Russia Party, but is actually popular with his constituents and in his most recent election won with over half of the vote as well. Truth be told, the main attraction of the Republic is the land itself. Such remote and wild land has a certain appeal and offers camping locations such as Teletskoy Lake and the Choi Range for hiking should one want to get back to nature. Alternatively, the Republic hosts the International Korotai 
of storytellers. This draws front singers and folk artists from across Russia and the wider East Asian world to tell myths and the songs and legends about the Altai Mountains, told over several days of music and feasting. As is the case with the Altai Cry, beekeeping is a popular pastime in the Republic, and there are many interesting properties ascertained to the honey that the bees make. Overall, the Altai Republic is a lush, spiritual land full of dramatic landscape, just not a lot of money, but hopefully with an indomitable people and good fortune that can be lifted up. Thank you for watching. My name is Andrew, and next episode will be on the Amir Oblast.